Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Cam back at you again. Today I'm bringing you a collection of mad bending licks to throw into your playing. Some of them are more of a country flavor, some of them are just weird, others are more of the rock style that you guys know me for best. In order to um, follow on best with this lesson, I'd recommend using a guitar with a hardtail bridge so you don't get any fluctuations in pitch when doing any of these crazy bends because some involve more than one string being bent at a time and or use a guitar with a dive only setup, which is so sort of hard down to the body, it kind of behaves like a hardtail. I'm in standard tuning today. Let's roll. So, lick number one. Really nice. Now, what we're doing here is we're bending up 14 on the B, a whole tone. Holding that there, we've got 14 on the high E. Put 14 on the B again. Then we go to 12 on the high E there, we change fingers. Put 14 on the B and let it down. Pull off to 12 and then play 13 on the G. Kind of like a mini lick in its own right. Really love that. Now we're going to go to the C sharp minor pentatonic, and the notes we're going to play really give off an E major flavor here. But we've got that. Uh, le uh, we're bending up 11 on the G there. We've got 12 on the high E, and then 12 on the B. People will know that if you're a Zach Wild fan like me. Feels quite like that kind of idea. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to go. We'll go to nine on the high E. Back to 12 on the B, let that down, and resolve on an E major triad. Then the next part, the party piece, which I think most people are interested in, is this. Really clever. What we're going to do, bend up 11 on the G with our index finger. That's bent up a whole tone there. And what you've got to try and ensure here is that the B string comes under your fingertip as well and sits in the same groove in your finger as that G string. We're then going to pluck the B string relax the G string, no pulling or anything like that, just let it return to its original spot and take the, the B string with us and you get this. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Once you get more confident with it, you can start to use it to build chords. How cool is that? Okay, this next part is more a concept I want to share with you guys. It's more this idea of bending notes that are already within chords to connect other chords together in different ideas. Uh, and the thing I want to show you is... So what you've got here is I'm bending up an E9. So 11 on the G. Bending it up to form the major third. Then you've got seven on the high E. And letting that down. Uh, the most important thing for you guys who are new to this sort of thing is to make sure that the, the string is quite close to the fingernail, not under the fingernail, because that hurts like crap. But the idea is that you're quite close to the very end of the finger there, because it gives you that freedom to rotate and almost close your hand together and still pull the string along. So. And it presents a really good challenge for your ear, I think, as well. And then another one I want you to check out is this one. This idea where you're forming a, basically a power chord with this. It should feel quite familiar, but instead we're not using the uh, index finger to fret the root. Instead, we're moving to the G string, sixth fret. And twisting it down all on its own, using the same technique we had before, the idea of sort of closing your hand to make it a major third there. If you ever want a minor version, you go up a semitone instead. And then maybe mix it with some pentatonic licks. But what's cool about this is that you can start to create some really original pieces and cool ways of connecting chords. If you want to see how this is applied, you can do some really freaky versions of things that a lot of us have heard before. For example, you could do In My Life by The Beatles, where you might have that. So it makes your guitar sound like a pedal steel, or maybe it's got a B bender or something. But I thought you might have some fun exploring that. Rock lick coming up. 
Right, for those of you who are Ozzy Osbourne fans will know that that is a lick from Rock and Roll Rebel, the live version, Jakey Lee on the guitar. And the idea with this one is you are really focused on the idea of bending up to the target pitch with this hand and then tapping a melody with this hand. And just to show you how that's done, we're starting off with a... This kind of idea. We're bending up four on the G, letting it down, pull off, open, hammer on. Turn it into a little exercise if you like, and it almost sounds like a whammy bar lick, but just with one hand. And after two rounds of that, you're gonna bend up that four and then hold that there. So then we're gonna tap a melody on the G string. We're gonna tap 12. Slide down to nine. Slide down to seven. So. Okay. Slide back to nine. Pull off and then release. And the idea with this is that you've gotta hold that bend the whole time without letting it go. And so that you can start to use these kinds of licks for yourself, because this is kind of like the sort of thing that unlocks a lot of Van Halen licks for you as well. And the most important thing when learning something like this is to know scales on a single string and how far the notes are apart. Because uh, what a lot of people find difficult with this is they'll bend a note up and have no idea where to tap. But the most important thing to grasp is that when you bend up, say, a whole tone, all of the notes above you doesn't matter where you're tapping, I've bent up a whole tone as well. So for example, if you want to bend up, um, say, the same note, and then hit a, uh, let's see, an F sharp, you would typically think, right, it's on the 11th fret, I remember where that is. But if you go to tap there, it's a G sharp, we don't want that. So you have to think about going back a step. Because you've turned that E note but it's now been bent up a whole tone, so you've now got F sharp, and the same thing continues up the neck. And by doing that, you can start to unlock some really cool ideas there. So sort of Van Halen style stuff that tends to come from that again, as I say, give that a go. Some more clean stuff coming up, and this next one is very much a, uh, sort of like a really fiddly idea where you're doing double stops here and you're bending both strings at the same time. And in this case, I'm moving to D minor. And what you've got is, is I'm bending up 12 on the high E with my index, then with my middle finger, up uh, the 13th on the whole, bending up a whole tone. God, I can't speak today, can I? That requires a lot of rotation, and yet you've got to think of bending these two strings here and using these two fingers, bending them as a unit, they're not separate. So the idea is, is to really think about is the bending together. So you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with it. And uh, also, if you ever wanted a slightly revamped version of Sultan's a Swing, you can use this idea where you might have It's really, really fun to do. And then when you whack the gain on, it also serves as a really, really good start to a solo. Listen to this. Thank you very much for watching this lesson today, guys. I hope you've liked what you've seen. If there's anything else you'd like me to teach on the channel, techniques, licks, etc., please let me know, and I'd love to see suggestions in the comments. I also teach one-to-one -one as well online, so if you guys would like to book a Zoom session with me or Skype lessons, I'm mainly on Skype, please see my contact details in the description box below. I look forward to hearing from you very soon. In the meantime, take care. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.